Welcome back to Power Pro Structures Modeling Fundamentals. In this, part 10, we're going to have a look at our end plate connections and how they work. Now before I kick off on this session, I just want to uh, apologize for the audio quality. This is a new headset and I'm still trying to get it dialed in. So just bear with me please. So we're going to be working with another one of our common uh, connections, the end plate connection found under the ProSteel tasks. W3 end plate. There's a fly out here, so there'll be a whole heap of options. I'll just go for number one, standard end plate, and standard connection methodology supported to supporting, just like that, and it will put the connection in automatically, like so, by default. Um, so let's run through the first, we'll kick off with the layout tab. Um, Option number one here, the width of our connection plate, which is 180 by a thickness of 16. Just like to remind you, if there's a flyout here, please pick the number out of the flyout. Okay, whenever there's a flyout. Number three is the length of the plate. Okay, and it can be manipulated using five and six, or, or as an option, I can use five or six as well, rather, I should state. So number three uh, will override five and six if there's a number in uh, number three. So if I reset this to zero, like so, then five and six will start coming into play. Okay, so that is currently minus 20 as sort of as nominated. So if you just watch on the screen, if I change this to zero, it will make it the same height exactly as the support beam that it, uh, that it connects up. Um, you can put in negative values and positive values. So if I set that to positive 10, it will come inside the depth of the beam, like so. So if you're going to put a weld or something there, okay, you can just see it there. Um, we can also set it to a negative value. So if I set it to, say, negative 75, it will hang out above and below where I put the figure. Okay, they, they don't need to be symmetrical. I'm just making them symmetrical. But you can see here that it overhangs by minus 75. Now one of the things that I'm really big on is measuring this plate and finding out the dimensions of it here because I like nice round dimensions when I'm doing stuff. It's just a personal preference. You can see here it's 454, right? not a nice round dimension. And that'll change if, this, if, the, if the beam or rafter came in on an angle as well. So let's make this, um, let's make it uh, 460. So we're just going to set the values of 5 and 6 to 78. Okay, 460, nice and neat. Okay. Alright. Now, alternatively, we, we could have had uh, 5 and 6 controlling the offset to give us a nice round measurement. Or, we can override the whole lot using number three, once we know what the value is. So I quite often use five and six just to help me control or help me find out what the overall dimension is. And then I jump, I jump in and I use number three to control it. So now five and six here in this instance are overridden by number three. They, they basically become redundant. So what do we do if we've got to offset our, our plate up or down? Well, in this option, if we put in a figure in number three to lock it in, we can change uh, the vertical offset with number eight. So I can put in a positive or negative, in this instance, negative 75, and you can see it pushes the whole lot down. Alternatively, if I um, sort of set this to zero, um, made number three zero, I could have, uh, I can control it with five and six as well. So it's, it's kind of up to you how you want to use this. All right, let's move on. So going one step further, um, let's have a look at, um, we have our slot length down the bottom here. So we can put it, we can make the holes a slot. We can rotate them if we wanted to. All right. Um, we could put a gap in so to allow for shim plates or packers, as well as if it was galvanized, you, you might want to put a gap in between the steelwork. Now, like every other connection, just be mindful of the as poly plate switch here. Okay, um, if I put in uh, the connection plate type that isn't automatically flat steel, let's have a look at this guy here, you can see 180 uh, by 16 plate, all right, because I put that switch on. 
but just be mindful um, if I made this 175 which is a non-standard size I, I really should have that polyplate switch ticked on because what it's going to do is going to alter the naming convention of it you can see here because I don't have it t switched on it's called plate 175 by 16 which is not how I've named everything else within all the other connections so if I turn it on here now you can see that um, my configuration overrides are starting to come into play so it's called 175 by 16 PL which is how I want it to look so just be mindful if you if you make some of this stuff oh while I think of it uh, set this material grade here too okay don't forget if I change it to plate make it the the, the plate grade 250 all right all right, so let's change this back to flat bar. So uh, 180, okay, 180 by 16 is a, a, a available flat size. Um, we also have the option here to rotate flat. Now, this works exactly like the base plate one did. And if you need a refresher, go back and have a look at the base plate one. I have a doubler plate option here to allow for two plates back to back. You can see they're a different size here. If I want to make them the same size, okay, they're slightly different sizes. Um, there's a switch right here to make them both exactly the same. Alright, nice and simple. Alright, so let's switch this back. So turn that guy off, uh, turn the double plate off. You would use that for apexes of rafters and stuff like that. Alright, holes. All right. I can have my connection hole. Once you've got your plate size worked out, you can have it with holes, without holes. Um, if it's standard like what we're looking at here now, I can have a upside set of holes, downside set of holes, and the holes in the middle are all symmetrical. Okay, 40 up, 40 down, and 90 in the middle. If it's non-symmetrical, like an offset plate, we tick this switch here, asymmetrical. We have the option to make it top edge of plate, and or my favorite, which is top edge of steel. So like all my holes are 70 mil down from top of, top of steel. So it's just a simple case of you select the option, type in your value, select the option again. Okay, just, just like I'm doing here. So 70, 70, 70. All right. Select the one you want to edit, type in your value, select it again. Really is that simple. Okay, and you can put in whatever, whatever values you want for offset holes and so forth like that. Remember, if it's symmetrical though, just, just untick this switch. All right, going across the you know a horizontal hole pattern, um, you can just nominate the standard hole centers 70, 90, 110. If it was a PFC or something and you've got to run straight down the middle, you can set it to one hole pattern, or two, or four, etc., etc. Okay, all, all pretty straightforward. Moving on to the connect tab here. Remember, choose your bolt size and the work loose, which is two mil work loose here. Our punch holes, like our other connections here, put the little put the little spot mark if you wanted to use um, um, NC uh, NC spot marks on your on your connection plates. Okay, um, not something I often do, but there are people that request it. Okay, it puts these little blink holes here. Okay. Um, galvanizing holes. The next thing, next tab, galvanizing holes are pretty straightforward. You can have them in the actual beam itself or you can have it in the end plate. Okay. Um, sort of based on what a, whatever parameters you need. Moving on to the next one. This tab uh, allows us to select if I had it was running a database. ProSteel will run off a database for connection. The moment tab will allow us to pick which is the optimal connection that we'd like to use. So I don't have any loaded here at the moment. The first of the stiffener tabs allows us to put backing plates or thickeners within the um, within the connection zone, as well as uh, top plates and, and, and web plates if there was connections into the web itself. The only downside with these is it breaks them into individual objects where in Australia we normally make them one plate per side. So that's probably the only downside to this connection option. The second of the stiffener tabs are your standard horizontal stiffeners in your supporting member. So by ticking on the tick switch, you can get them that line up with the the ones that line up with the uh, 
uh, flanges of the beam. If you have a template, you can pre-load pre the template um, and you can set the thickness accordingly. Um, the inner stiffeners uh, actually allow for both um, internal stiffeners and external stiffeners as well. So it gives you a couple more options here with regards to sort of where you want to place them, there's different offsets and so forth here, so and how many you want to place. Now the bottom cord tab, this is an interesting one. This one allows us to put a haunch on the top or the bottom of our connection. So our bottom is normally pretty standard and you can see it just drops something straight in here. Um, it's common in Australia here to use the same beam size as what uh, we've used for the beam here. So this top switch here, coped shape, tells it I want you to use a 310UB40 which is our original size. So uh, number two just sort of allows for the, the bottom cut or bottom length on it. We'll make that 250. Um, and I'll just make this a little bit longer uh, which is number one. Uh, so let's make that 800. And then option number three sort of gives you a, a little sort of a, a little straight bit on the end. Um, we can put stiffeners in at the bottom and the other thing to just to bear in mind the end plate itself doesn't automatically lengthen okay so if you want the end plate to match up properly um, with this we'll need to head to the layout tab here and and lengthen using the the, the original tools here that i showed you um, just to um, lengthen it up a little bit and and, and match your haunch how that goes in. From, from there we, we would template it off so I'm just mucking around with some figures here just to see if I can get something to work for you but there, uh, rough and ready but you get the idea. All right we'll just come back to our bottom cord and we'll pull that back off because uh, untick. actually probably the simplest way would just be let's get rid of the let's come back and just reload the template back for the original connection easier than undoing everything. The group tab here, standard grouping, um, create group, create group with bolts etc. Uh, we also have the ability to notch the top and bottom corners. Okay, uh, and the, finally the assignment. Okay, you can see here I've automatically given it the description uh, end plates. I didn't need to do that for an automatic connection but, uh, but I have. Don't forget your material grades please. Okay, just be mindful of when you're changing between poly plates and flats. So let's just quickly go back through the editing and uh, cloning. So let's close this down. Remember, if I want to delete or edit this connection, select the object that's been created by the connection and I can change it or delete it from here. Don't just delete the components. Okay, so this is the pro correct protocol to use if I want to change it or edit it. So in this instance, change. Okay, takes us through to here. Now I could clone this if I wanted to, to go back with the clone. And just one thing to be careful of, all right, like I said, um, just hit the reset to insert multiple, which is what I want to do, so right for reset. Uh, make sure you've got this uh, filter that shows up there that tells you that it's ready to go and pick your objects. Remember, don't pick left and right each side of a column, okay? Do it in, in sets of panels. So in this instance, it would be, say, the beam, the column, uh, this column here. I could also do the, uh, a completely separate panel of connections, okay? And there's no confusion about what owns what connection here. So this guy here um, are all in the same plane, all right? They're, they're, they're not fighting for what owns what beam, all right? So just, just I hope I've described that well enough for you. All right. And if I was to do the ones on the back side, you know, the opposing ones, I do them in a second operation like this.